All right, so, you know, we're 2-0, and and that's the best that you can be after two games. So, you know, I got to re- just remind myself, too, going to the locker room, you know, this was a challenging week with two less days, and, you know, we only had one day of practice. So I think to come out and play pretty well in the first half, you know, was – Good job by the players of getting that done. It got sloppy in the second half, and, you know, unfortunately these games tend to do that. When they're lopsided, it's kind of hard to get them to come out and play the same way in the second half. But we did get to play a lot of players, so excited about that because we didn't in the first game. So it's good to get those guys on film and get them involved. And um, thought we gave up too many yards on defense. <clears throat> and... And we weren't very good on third down. Again, second week in a row on offense. Well, we go for it, luckily, on fourth down. That saves us, but we got to improve on third downs. So, got work to do. Sounds like um, Tulane played really well, I guess, in the first half. Keith gave me an update before. I was going out. I was all excited for, you know, the walk. And he's like, oh, by the way, Tulane scored like 50 points in the first half. So, um, I said, okay, well, we're just trying to win this one. But the walk was cool. It was really – the energy was amazing that early, um, you know, to be out there. So I know our players and staff appreciated that and felt the support. And so we got to keep playing better so we can fill the stadium. Lane, what do you learn or what can you learn about your football team in a lopsided game like this when you when you put the film on tomorrow and look at it? I do enjoy the part of seeing backups play, you know, because those guys work really hard. But also, most of those guys think they should be playing, so they get to show it. And sometimes they show where they should be, and sometimes they don't. But at least then they see it. So it's really it's exciting. I think that we, you know, over years pulled our starters earlier than most people because of that. We didn't in the opener because I wasn't there. Um, so. We played our guys a little too long, especially on offense. But it's good to see those guys get in. You know, I hate that we Snoop had the one fumble. You know, we would have had two games in a row with no turnovers, not even putting the ball on the ground. And which you're going to win a lot of games if we can move the ball like we do and don't turn it over. But I didn't have that same feeling today of the defense, you know, just really knocking them out and being super physical. And I'm, I'm not – going to buy into that while well, you have a short week, and that's why we still can be be more physical. But we're going to have to this week. And the concern is outside, you know, the deep balls and the, the pass interference is on the corners. Lane, you talked a lot in the fall about wanting to see Sam get a little more consistent off the edge. He had a couple of big plays today. What are you seeing from him? Are you starting to see that consistency? Was today a good sign? We've seen that from Sam all camp. He came back. From this summer, just a different player. You know, we struggle every day with him, you know, blocking him in practice, you know, with our ones on both sides. So I was just hoping that would carry over into the game. And I think what we're doing, we don't do as many things defensively, I think is helping him. And, you know, like I've said, in the system we play, if your two ends aren't very good rushers, it's not a very good system. You know, I got three guys rushing, and they double the nose every time. So, luckily, we got, you know, Sam and Cedric out there that give people problems. A couple of big um, fourth down conversions at the end of the first half. I think you guys were four of six overall. Was was that a point of emphasis to keep being aggressive? Um, even I think you guys were at 23 nothing uh, when you converted that first one uh, at, at, at the end of the half. Yeah, I kind of went above the book a little bit. Um, on some, and that was just thoughts in before when we talked about it, saying, okay, we feel like our matchup's really good on offense. Our quarterback's hot. The three receivers are hot. So we may have some fourth and mediums that say punt or kick, and we're going to go for them because um, we like our percentages. And really should have thrown a touchdown to Drummond on the one versus cover zero and waste a good play that would beat cover zero. And, you know, he's too casual with the ball. So that was kind of disappointing. Lane, you mentioned you got the opportunity to play a lot of guys tonight. Fourth quarter, we saw Luke and John Rice Plumley take some snaps at quarterback. How important is it for you to be able to see those guys in game action, particularly Luke, which was his, well, I guess his second game action, but first substantial action? 
Well, we made a big thing about the fans staying for the fourth quarter. So Plumley had not practiced at quarterback all week because he was trying to get receiver down. And so I figured fans will stay longer if Plumley has the ball. So that's why you saw us basically give him the ball at receiver and then move him to quarterback. So Levy's like, you know, we haven't practiced these plays. I'm like, he'll be fine. We've got to keep the crowd around. So it was cool to see him have success. Um, you know, just to follow up, uh, Orlando Mata did not play tonight. Jake Springer did not play tonight. Do you expect to beat those guys to – Hopefully be back next weekend. We do. Um, two very critical players. Um, obviously, they're really the centerpieces of our systems, the center and where he plays in our defense. And you saw how many hits he had in the opener. So we need those guys back. You talked about cleaning up some of the PIs on defense. Did you see something kind of consistent with those, or were they just kind of they were PIs? No, I felt like – there were some early that definitely were. There were some that were questionable. Um, but we're turning and we're arm barring the guy, you know, before you get our head around and, and block him off. So it's like the targeting. We can sit and complain all we want. You know, like our coaches are complaining that it's a penalty. So it doesn't matter what you say. They're not going to pick it up. So we got to coach it better. A couple of days, Dontario said he was uh, even a little bit surprised with kind of the volume uh, that he saw in the first game. He had another big game today. Um, you know, you, you brought up that it could have been a little bit bigger. Um, are, are, are you surprised at all with, with how he started off this season? No, he's had a really good camp. He's worked really hard. I probably didn't know the numbers would be like that. And he really had two more touchdowns today. He dropped one, and then Hudson Wolf didn't crack the right guy, um, or he would have had another one. But <clears throat> he's done a great job, and you just never know. With the system, when you're going fast, you don't know how they're going to play. You know, we can't tell you who's going to catch all the balls. And I think in the opener, especially um, in this game, they stayed deep for the most part on the outside. I mean, I'm sure they read reports of, <clears throat> you know, Braylon running by everybody, every scrimmage we have. So, um, plus when we open the practice to you guys, you guys report how great Braylon is. And so now they cover him. So, Braylon, thanks, you guys. Hey, Lane, uh, all the way up here. How's it going? Great. Uh, um, when you mentioned earlier about um, replacing a guy like Elijah Moore, you said it was going to be a type of thing like, you know, receivers by committee, and you kind of alluded to it there. But is this kind of what you envisioned in terms of efforts from guys like Jonathan and Don Terry? Both those guys had big nights tonight. Is that kind of what you envisioned, like uh, guys like that kind of taking over those reins? Yeah, I mean, I would have probably guessed Braylon's numbers would be the best of the three just based off of scrimmages, but um, it is what it is. I think it's cool, you know, down there, you know, we get one for Braylon late. He didn't ask for it, but I just felt like, all right, let's get him a touchdown, you know, on the crossing route just because the guy hasn't really touched the ball very much and even brought him in motion and gave him the ball, you know, just because the guy works really hard. But, you know, the targets aren't on purpose the way they are, but, Mingo and Drummond, Gordon had 21 targets today, and they only played, what, two and a half quarters or something. I guess as a follow-up to that, um, obviously Mingo had a big game. Can you say anything specifically about what, you, what you've seen from him these, these first two weeks? Yeah, I mean, not to sound not excited, but, you know, he's got the deep post that is close to a catch. I mean, Knox FaceTimed me at halftime and said he's watching on TV, and it was definitely a catch, so – I said, hold my tell the officials for him. But um, that would have been big play. Obviously changed his stats. But he, he's played great. You know, you look even in the first game, the few catches, how physical he looked. Um, actually, Knox said today when we were talking before the game, he's like, he he kind of looks like a, you know, DK Metcalf's brother. So that's a pretty big compliment, um, how physical he looks out there. Lane, you, you spent a scholarship in your 21 class on a high school kicker. And um, that's not something people do every single year. Uh, Costa has proven to be automatic thus far this year. How big is it in terms of you coaching a game that you've got the confidence that, that you know you've got a leg that you can depend on? Yeah, it's great. I mean, the guy did well in camp, but he actually kicks better in the games than he has even in camp, which is – you know, kickers are like players. There's ones that are gamers, you know, that just show up. So it's awesome to see, especially as you said, when you invest a scholarship, which we don't do. If you're doing it right, you're only doing it every four to five years because the guy's really good and kicks. So it looks like we hit a good one.
which I've never understood the thing, don't use a scholarship on it. But then at the end of the game, everybody's waiting for the guy to kick the game, kick the ball to win or lose the game. But was he worth the scholarship? So there's my philosophy on scholarship kickers. All right, thanks, Coach.